Welcome to the second episode in a Legendarium series about the life of Elizabeth Bathory. In part two, Wife of the Black Knight, we will talk about Elizabeth Bathory's descent into sadism. Well versed in mathematics and languages, the young Elizabeth Bathory proved adept at managing her husband's vast estates. Between the two of them, she and her husband Frank owned thousands of acres of land, including farms, dozens of towns, and twenty castles. In effect, the power couple ruled a miniature kingdom, and Elizabeth ruled it capably. She issued directives on the most profitable sales of crops and livestock. When a neighboring noble invaded some of her lands, the Lady Bathory wrote to him, So, my good sir, you have done this thing. You have occupied my small possessions because you are poor, but I do not think that we will leave you to enjoy them in peace. You will find in me a man. Of course, the neighbor withdrew. Considering her later reputation as a sadist, she also showed concern for the horn-handed sons of toil who worked her land. There are recorded instances when she intervened on behalf of impoverished women. These included the wife of a Turkish captive whose daughter became pregnant by assault. Was this humanitarianism, or was she simply looking after the taxpayers who fattened her coffers? Meanwhile, Ferenc served against the Ottoman Turks, who already conquered much of Hungary more than a generation past. By 1578, at the age of 23, Ferenc already became the commander-in-chief of the Hungarian army. At home, he was known as the Black Knight. The Turks called him the Black Bay, which meant the Black Chieftain. He was known for his vicious treatment of the Turks. Nadasti supposedly danced with their mangled corpses on the battlefield and played catch with their severed heads. Darker stories began to circulate about the late medieval power couple. Ferenc often wrote his wife about how to discipline troublesome or lazy servants. When he came home around Christmas and Easter, he offered demonstrations. In one account, Ferenc took a recalcitrant serving girl outside, disrobed her, and smeared her with honey. Ferenc ordered the girl to stand in this manner for a day and a night. Being summer, bees and insects stung and bit her to agony. When she dropped to the ground from exhaustion, Ferenc put pieces of oiled paper between her toes and lit them on fire to wake her up. Elizabeth watched and participated in this infamous incident. Ferenc also gifted Elizabeth a glove studded with sharp iron nails that allowed her to draw blood whenever she slapped a servant. In the year 1601, the Bathory family went down an even darker road when a strange woman named Anna Darvolia joined their household. Anna seemingly unfettered Elizabeth's latent sadism. Her husband taught her how to torture, but Anna showed her how to murder. Ferenc became ill the same year that Elizabeth met Anna, suffering partial paralysis of the legs. More rumors began to spread about Elizabeth's sadism as her husband lay on his sickbed. Supposedly, she began drinking the blood of young girls, believing it would preserve her youthfulness and looks. Witnesses told of her stabbing victims' hands, faces, and arms. Peasant families dared not inquire into the deaths of their daughters who worked as Elizabeth's servants as that would mean challenging the awesome power of the Bathory family. Polite society took scant interest in the death of peasants, so Elizabeth could kill to her heart's content. A priest, however, noted that Elizabeth called him over with growing frequency to officiate funerals for servants who supposedly died of cholera. 
He said, Your grace should not have acted so, because it offends the Lord, and we will be punished if we do not complain to you and criticize your grace. To confirm that my words are true, we need only exhume the body, and we will find that the marks identify the way in which the death occurred. Elizabeth Bathory exploded, threatening the humble village priest with the power of her politically influential family. He remained quiet, but others would not. Ferenc finally died in 1604, leaving Elizabeth Bathory a widow in charge of a vast estate. She struggled to cope with being a widow and running the vast estate without Ferenc's income. Elizabeth, increasingly deranged, began to lure girls from surrounding villages into her castle with offers of work. She formed a coterie of other sadistic women, including Anna Dorvulia, Ilona Jo, a former wet nurse to the Countess's children, Dotaria Sensus, a friend of Jo, and an elderly washerwoman named Katalin Bezensky. They were joined by a young man named Janos Uvjeri, or Fisco, the only man in Elizabeth's coterie. The women tried to outdo one another in torturing their victims. A victim would simply go about their work for days or even weeks until they made a trivial mistake. Missing a stitch while sewing meant being forced to disrobe and then being stabbed through the lips or fingers with needles. After giving the girl permission to remove the needle, Elizabeth might cut their finger off with a knife. Elizabeth supposedly prided herself on making the penalty fit the crime. For example, if a girl was suspected of stealing, she would heat up a coin and then press it into her flesh. The fortunate ones simply fled after this first torment unfortunate ones would be dragged into private chambers where the countess and her flunkies ripped the girl's flesh with pincers or tore out their innards. Sometimes the countess forced her victims to eat the remains of their half-starved friends. Blood covered the floors of the torture chamber, which surviving girls cleaned up. Soon the murderous coterie ran out of places to bury the girls and placed them in shallow graves outside the castle walls. Their wolves dug them up and feasted upon them. Though many knew about the Countess's atrocities, the law did not allow peasants to bring charges against nobles. Indeed, many peasants knew of Elizabeth's crimes and continued to sell unwanted daughters to her for a cash payment. If they became one of the many, many girls to die of cholera, it meant one less mouth to feed. Noble women such as Lady Anna Welker, Lady Judith Pogan, and Lady Zell acted as girl catchers for the Countess. They traveled to find her new female servants when local supplies dried up. Even her youngest favorite daughter, Catalin, likely took part in at least one torture session with her mother at Sesje, the Countess's favorite residence. The atrocity occurred before Catalan's wedding. Two young girls endured torture and burning so terrible they died during Catalan's marriage festivities. By 1609, each of Elizabeth's four children married and her confidant Anna died of a stroke. As the countess spiraled into depression, another funky named Erzy Marjorova, supposedly a forest witch, suggested that Elizabeth find a better class of victims. Erzy convinced Elizabeth that spilling the blood of young noble women would somehow refill the Bathory coffers, much drained by debt in part to collect the much-needed fees from their well-born parents, Elizabeth Bathory opened her palace to aristocratic young women where they could supposedly learn manners and polish. We will find out what happened to them in the next episode. I hope you enjoyed this installment of The Legendarium. If you did, press like. If you want to see more, press subscribe. And if you've got anything to say, let me know in the comments section. Thanks again for joining me, and I hope that you have a great rest of the the day.